after looking at the many different designs for these types of carts, I knew I wanted the vertical style instead of the side-by-side -side cart to minimize the footprint in my shop. So the first thing I had to do was figure out the basic dimensions of the vacuum, and I did this by building a box around the vacuum up to the point where it's most wide. This let me know how big the bottom of the cart needed to be. I also got a rough measurement of the height with a scrap piece of wood and a straight rule. One final key measurement was the diameter of the cyclone bucket. With these measurements, I could design the whole cart and get to cutting. I started out by breaking down a three-quarter sheet of Baltic birch plywood. If you're not familiar with it, it's a very stable, high-ply material that is great for shop projects. From this, I could cut the bottom and side panels of my cart to length and width at the table saw. I then cut all the other various parts that make up the upper platform and stretchers and use my crosscut sled to cut them to length. And there you have it, all the parts needed to make the cart. The final bit of cutting on the project had to do with creating the angles and notches on the side panels. I really wanted the base of the cart to angle upward to where the cyclone bucket would sit. This would give the cart a lighter look and give easier access to the switch on the vacuum. The notches will allow the stretchers to nest into the cart keeping the overall look clean. The notches are fairly easy to take care of at the bandsaw. I used a magnet as a stop and set my fence to the proper distance and cut the long edges then move the fence back to finish the job. Four notches done. To take care of the long tapered cuts, I used the track saw. My panels were too big to allow me to effectively cut them on the table saw and my band saw would have left a rough edge that I didn't want on the front of my cart. So I lined up my track saw to my marks and made the cuts. If you don't have a track saw, a circular saw and straight edge would work for this job too. I then grabbed the bottom panel and drilled a hole in each corner to accept the casters that will come later. So to start construction, I set my bottom and side panels into parallel clamps. These help keep the pieces aligned as well as act as an extra pair of hands. I used a clamp as a spreader, checking for square along the way until everything was right angles. I then secured the two sides to the bottom with screws in pre-drilled holes. From there I added the upper back stretcher by setting it into the notches and screwing it into place. Same thing with the lower back stretcher, placing it into the notches, pre-drill and screw into place. On the opposite side I add a front stretcher, which will act as a lip preventing the vacuum from rolling out of the cart. Now it's onto the top of the cart where the cyclone will sit. I butt the bottom panel up against the upper back stretcher and secure it with four screws. I then add a front panel by securing it with three screws. And finally I add the two side panels by securing them from the front and back with two screws each. Next I add the casters by inserting them into the four holes I drilled in the bottom and securing with lock washers and lock nuts. Turning the cart on its side allowed me to securely fasten each caster using a wrench and pliers. At this point, the cart is almost completely assembled, and so I wanted to pause for a minute to make sure that everything fit. The vacuum fit perfectly with almost no wiggle room, and the bucket slid right into place on the top of the cart. Now I can breathe easy. I wanted a way to secure the cyclone and bucket, so I cut two dividers and drilled three quarter inch holes in each side at the drill press. I then added glue to the sides and bottom and slid them into place on either side of the bucket and secured with screws. Using a hole saw, I added a spot to place the broom attachment for my vacuum when I'm done. I then added the cyclone and bucket and secured them by hooking two bungee cords into the holes drilled into the dividers. And then I added my vacuum attachments to the area created by the dividers. One final piece of business was connecting the cyclone to the vacuum. I didn't have any extra dust hoses, so instead I went with PVC pipe. I think it adds a cleaner look with no hoses flopping around. I cut my PVC pipe to length and add the Cyclone hose adapter to the vacuum. I used two 90 degree elbows to help create the connection and with a rubber pipe connector on both ends I connect the Cyclone to the vacuum. And there you have it. One dust collection cart ready for action. I'm really happy with this design. The footprint of the cart, including the PVC, is less than two square feet which makes it only slightly bigger than the vacuum by itself. 
I can easily access the on off switch and the three inch casters allow me to move the dust collection cart wherever I need it in the shop easily.